welcome to our uh, weekly uh, LinkedIn Live. Um, Lynn and I were just talking before we almost started this late today because um, we're just so captivated with our conversation about getting the late coffee and all that stuff because uh, like Lynn, this is a late start for me too. Um, but I want to welcome Lynn back. Um, Lynn is an amazing resource in Philadelphia between the uh, great careers Philly and all that. And um, she's one of my go-to speakers here. And, and I always love having her on and she'll be also on next week with our um, all our LinkedIn coaches, our summer um, summer blowout. And I'm actually be wearing a Hawaiian shirt that day. You know, at least Hawaiian, I. Hawaiian is that the theme? Well, I'm with that. well no, awesome. Dave Dave Shuckman has his Hawaiian shirt, so I got to do the Hawaiian shirt with the with with the shades, just wow. to kind of warm up for sure. So, Lynn, you wanted to talk, I think, today mainly about um, a portfolio and doing. Um, putting something together from a job seeker's perspective, I guess, because I know you're you're my go-to when it comes to all the uh, the ATS stuff, but let's talk about something else too. Yeah, the well, last time we did talk about the applicant tracking system, so I thought, let's let's cover another topic today, sure, and thank you so sure. much for having me. Definitely. So, let's talk about career portfolios. Absolutely. What is it now? What is it, What do you consider a career portfolio to be? Well, I'm going to go back to uh, some root words. Um, I, I speak French, so uh, I apologize to all my Italian friends out there if I botch the pronunciation. Mm -hmm. But uh, it came from uh, the Italian portare, meaning to carry, and mm -hmm. folio, sheet of paper. So that's kind of, you know, what it originally started at. Mm -hmm. But obviously, sheet of paper... Uh, has come a long way with the the world of technology and you know digital stuff, but it, it goes beyond the letter and the resume. Uh, you want to build uh, a portfolio over your entire career of the different things that you've done, so you can showcase you know your collection. Uh, in other words, it, it can kind of be a scrapbook, so to speak. Um, and it, it doesn't have to be paper. It could be, you know, a collection of papers, but it, it also it also can be digital. So what you are dealing with is kind of meta thinking about your personal branding and your work identity. And you typically want to choose your best and most relevant work. And if you don't toot your horn, ain't nobody going to toot it for you, right? I would agree. I think I used to think of LinkedIn as being part of a portfolio in the sense that you can definitely put some things on there. And what I love is you can actually create, have that portfolio as in your featured section, perhaps as another thing that you do, because it's another way for you to kind of showcase your skills and it can encompass as much or as little as you want it to. Right. Yeah. So uh, definitely uh, we're going to talk about LinkedIn, but there's, other sure. you know things that you could mm -hmm. use Definitely. for career portfolios so like which ones you know when you say well, i i originally got interested in career portfolios probably in a circuitous way um do you remember when your kids were born you know you and your <laughs> wife were maybe creating or maybe your wife it was creating baby books right yeah, so sure. that's yep kind of like a portfolio of, of your birth. Okay. And then, you know, as my kids went through first grade to 12th grade and then on to college, mm -hmm. um, I created what we call life binders in our house. Okay. So we have these big three inch binders and, you know, you put the report card in every year and other significant memorabilia and you wind up with probably a couple branch binders. So then I got involved in scrapbooking, um, which is like really fun. I'm very crafty, but I don't have time for that. You know, <laughs> I haven't had time for that for a few years. And then when I was a K-12 teacher, you know, then you get involved in making these beautiful bulletin boards for your classroom and you have to turn in a binder of um, your accomplishments as a teacher and what went on in your classroom and what did the kids mm -hmm. learn. And of course you take pictures of their parties and, and whatnot. And you turn this in for your uh, annual review at the end of the year. So it's so, just one of, the, 
couple of things. Paul Sakal supports that idea as well. Um, and I have a question from Michelle Norton, which which I can relate to too. How do you build a portfolio if you cannot take the work with you as per company restrictions? And so my question to you is, is that part of what you would consider the portfolio? Or is there other things besides that? Yeah, you have to follow um, uh, NDAs, non-disclosure mm -hmm. agreements, and you right. cannot um, you cannot publicly publicize certain information if you mm -hmm. have signed these documents. But um, you know, you can always publish verbiage maybe without numbers, you know, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, of your accomplishments. A lot of people don't put um, certain things on LinkedIn because it is confidential, but they might put it on their resume that is just going to, you know, one person or they might share those accomplishments in an interview. But a career portfolio, it's not about your company. It's about you. It's it's all about you. Which which so, brings me to the thing. My son, when he was looking for a job, created an about me um, website at the time, which was easy for him to do just to put something together. So I don't know if that's the type of thing you're alluding to, or I think just someone in the chat actually put down GitHub as an as an I as a as a suggestion. Are there things like that that you're you're you're, you're suggesting too? Yeah, absolutely. So I have uh, like a, a, a big list of, of, you know, different resources you could use. But, you know, right now, because of where we are with technology, it really is important to put together, um, you know, some kind of a digital portfolio. Mm -hmm. uh, when my daughter, oldest daughter, graduated with her master's degree um, from uh, a local university, uh, she was asked to put together a digital portfolio. And she said, can I put it on my LinkedIn profile? And the professor said, sure, why not? So she added, you know, her, her videos, um, attachments. She added her um, WordPress blog and whatnot. So you can really, you know, utilize LinkedIn uh, to its full advantage and, and create that electronic portfolio for yourself. But do keep in mind, you know, you don't want to violate your your NDA agreements. Now, one of the things I did, I still have and this. This will date me a lot. I used to get these recommendations, um, written recommendations. Mm -hmm. I would get a thank you and all that. And I ended up scanning them as as PDFs and put them up because back in the day, before an internet or anything like, like that, you got them another way. So Absolutely. however you have that, I mean, again, that's part of who I am. It's not as much a part as I used to be, but people starting out, whatever you have should be part of yeah. that portfolio. So um, there's a couple ways that you can deal with that. Mm -hmm. So I used to have way more recommendation letters than I show. And the mm -hmm. reason being is they all of them went to ashes. I had a fire in 2015. I lost everything in my life and including all those lovely recommendation letters, which can't be replaced is that a lot of them came from when I was in California. But um, if you if you have uh, a, a pile of recommendation letters and you scan them, you can create a PDF file and sure, you can upload those to your LinkedIn profile, you know, as, as a document. But another thing you could do is you could take screenshots of from the PDF and put it into a Google Doc. Mm -hmm. And then as your the years go by, you don't have to keep uploading, you know, the newest batch with one more recommendation letter and one more recommendation letter, one more recommendation letter. Mm -hmm. You can just copy and paste um, the screenshot into your Google Doc and put the most current on the top. And, and if that's attached to your profile as recommendation letters, you know, you'll actually see that. Um, I think I put it under around the clock execs on my mm -hmm. LinkedIn profile. I think you'll see my recommendation letters. What I did have left um, that wasn't burnt to a crisp and, you know, turned into ashes from the fire. But um, uh, yeah, that's another way that you can deal with it. Because not everybody, you know, from my past, I can't find them on LinkedIn. 
my most favorite boss ever. I can't find him on LinkedIn. So I don't know if he's still, you know, on this planet or, or not, but he's certainly on not link, uh, not on LinkedIn. So I could never get a, a recommendation from him. I, what about video? What about videos? You think videos should be part of that portfolio too? Oh, uh, why not? Absolutely. You know, videos speak, uh, um, you know, a thousand words They show your, your, uh, how you speak, your eye contact, your smiles, you know, your personality, uh, how you speak publicly. Um, so absolutely videos, uh, and video resumes even are, are a, a great, um, addition that you can add on. Now, Mindy Stern and I, we had a conversation yesterday. I'm really happy that she's able to join today. And I agree. It's a great way to capture important information about yourself. You know, for sure. I think, and the good thing about that is you can even put that link, that portfolio link on LinkedIn itself. You know, it, oh, becomes, yeah. it becomes in addition, you, know, you, you can list your websites on there. You can list your contact information. If you put a link to that there too, it's just another way to further market and promote yourself. Yeah. So, you know, if you were to ask me like, wh why should people have a career portfolio? I mean, it, it, it's really important. You got to keep track of your accomplishments. Um, like the minute you start a new job, you know, re record stuff at the end of each week or the end of each day somewhere so that you can, you can track things that you did and get your baseline numbers so that you can, you know, if you don't, if you can't give dollar amounts on how you help the company, you know, make money or save money or save time, then, you know, maybe you can turn it into percentages. I had a client who said, oh, I work for a family owned company and I can't publish any numbers, but I can certainly publish percentages of mm -hmm. what my sales were from point A to point B. I'm like, brilliant. You know, that, that, that's a way to, to skirt the, uh, the problem and the issue. But you can also showcase your skills. Uh, if you have a career portfolio to share, this may help you stand out from um, other people who are uh, interview candidates. And it, it also can demonstrate how you um, have attention to detail and how you organize things. So, you know, thought process and, and whatnot. So, oh, so this is the Michelle. And I'm going to ask the question for you to answer, I guess it's probably better. Do you recommend loading recommendation letters to your LinkedIn profile? Um, yes. Why not? Okay. Yeah, because as I say, not everybody is going to um, be on, on LinkedIn. You know, the people um, that, that, you know, I, I worked for long ago, um, you know, they, they may or may not be around. Um, they may or may not be on, on LinkedIn. So, you know, it's, it's carpe diem. Seize the opportunity of the day and, uh, you know, you, you got to toot your horn. And because I think that's also a great weekend, ta weekend task. We all look for things to do on the weekends, whether it's that are not job search specific related, like emails and phone calls and things. Spend a couple of hours do you know to go through your stuff and take advantage have the cup of coffee or tea or whatever and just do it then it's very relaxing and it's easy to do it that way and i think that's a big part of it is when you actually going to do it yeah so if you you know go through your files mm -hmm. um you may want to start out first by by putting together a binder of of, of some sort mm -hmm. and um getting you know papers together so at least you can organize uh, sequentially, you know, what happened with who and when, but, you know, we, we live in a digital world now mm -hmm. and you kind of need to take those papers and need to turn them into something electronic or digital to make it easy for people to access. Um, so, you know, th there's different ways of making, um, electronic portfolios. So you already mentioned, obviously. Mm -hmm. so, so Nancy, what about Jibberjobber? Or, or is that another site that you would um, recommend for doing something like this? Um, yes. I mean, Jibberjobber is uh, a very good platform. Um, 
and you know they've they've been around for quite some time so um i haven't you know been on it recently so i don't know you know what features and benefits that they've um uh put together um but i'm going to talk about um one that i am familiar with sure. Sure. you know when we talk about these electronic portfolios sure. um so other than linkedin mm -hmm. um you can uh you definitely can make videos. Um, you can make Word documents, PDFs. You can build your own Google site, which is, you know, a website. Um, you know, if you have a Gmail account, um, Google Docs, uh, Google Sheets. Uh, if you're proficient in building websites or want to learn, you know, some new tech skills. Um you know, I, I know there's Squarespace and Wix and other things out there. I'm I'm a WordPress geek. Hmm. So, um, you know, I've been working on WordPress, I don't know, six, seven years or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so I've learned how to build SEO, you know, in the back of um, my blog articles. Yep. And, mm -hmm. You know, so I to me, that's all transferable knowledge, you mm -hmm. know, when it comes to keywords on, on LinkedIn, you know. So, right. um then uh, one of my favorites, uh, and I don't know whether it was 2020. Yeah, it was 2020 um, when I was introduced to Canva.com. OMG. Right. It's changed my world. And it just keeps getting better and better. So uh, I don't know if you're aware, but you can actually create presentations in Canva. And you yeah. can share that link. Um, so if you take screenshots of a variety of things, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. you pop those in your Canva presentation. Uh, if you are in the tech world, there's a lot of people that have their own GitHub. So that's a way of them showcasing uh, their tech skills. It's also a but, way for you if you're a freelancer, you have a portfolio. If you put that portfolio up on a site that's looking for freelancers, in addition to your profile again that's just another marketable tool for sure yeah. um one of the ones that i've come across recently that i really fell in love with is wintheview.com mm -hmm. so last i don't i don't remember what month it is so a after this um session is over i'm going to put some links in in the the chat you know, mm -hmm. so look for my links at the end of the chat. Um, I wrote two articles about career portfolios, and one of them I just wrote just about Win the View. It is a super cool platform that I think all career coaches should know about. Um, I, I think, you know, you can make clients shine by by using this because it's it's not only, you know, documents, but it's video um, and it, it, it you can put colors and logos of the company you're interviewing for. You can customize it. It really is super cool. So uh, I'm going to talk about a little special contest I've got going uh, well, with that. One thing I yeah. wanted to mention, did, have you looked at the, uh, the LinkedIn template functionality that just came out? Or are you aware of it? Because I, I was just, thinking... Yeah. If, because you can put a clickable link in there, and if you put the clickable link to your portfolio in there with some text, I wonder how that would work. Wow, you know, it's it's opening up a whole new world for job right. seekers. Yeah, I've had a pretty busy week. I I don't know what it is, but you know, I've been kind of exploding with some clients, which is a good problem to have. Um, so I haven't had a chance to play with the with the uh, template thing yet, but I've seen people's posts it's just so people know how to do it if you go to your phone it's an update on your phone you know when you can do a post or a poll it'll ask if you want to create a template and then from the template you can put text in there you can put clickable links in there uh it's really just a work in progress and it's a beta test and it's not easy to do we're trying to figure it out and a lot of us want to see if we can have our own customized templates as an option instead is of the default one page? Page. what is it just one page it's just one page now. Okay. We're hoping that they make it into something else. And we all want to We all want to have our branded templates as part of that instead of having to use theirs. I mean, this is a whole discussion that we have with the product team right now, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. Yeah, I will uh, I will explore it when I can. Um, mm -hmm. As you know, I'm working on my doctoral dissertation. 
Right. And class, new class started yesterday that goes through December. So um, I, you won't see me, you know, participating in as many engagements on LinkedIn and whatnot does as, um, you know, other people do. And it's because I need to focus on, on my future and my little Holy grail. So, so what, what is the doctoral dissertation about? I know what it is, but I think you should share that with everyone. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, I'm at Gwynn and Mercy university and it's, um, a whole online program. Uh, the support is just, you know, wonderful. I love my dissertation chair. And um, I'm doing an EDD, Doctor of Education. So mm -hmm. here's the topic. It is on LinkedIn for job seekers who are digital immigrants. So if you need to know what is a digital immigrant, that would be somebody who is a boomer or Gen X. And that is different from digital natives who were born 19... Um, 82 and after mm -hmm. versus the 1981 and before. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean that, you know, us old farts can't learn how to be, you know, uh, digital learners right. and tech savvy, but it, it just differentiates, you know, the age of the net generation uh, versus the pre net generation. Uh, so I will be looking for, uh, candidates in New Jersey, Delaware, and Pennsylvania to interview, um, you know, a little bit down the road. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. So I chose the topic, obviously. <laughs> LinkedIn is my passion. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to bringing that home. But I've, I've got to carve out that time. So, so I got, uh, you know, Jude, um, I remember, Jude, when Lynn first told us about the topic and we were like, this is like totally right up your alley because you live and die LinkedIn probably as much as I do yeah. um, in a different way. Um, and, and you've made a science of a lot of things. I mean, we've, we've had discussions before about uh, the keywords and the bots and the ATS and all that. And you've taken it to a much different level than all of us have, you know, with, between the science and all that other stuff. So I cannot wait to read that dissertation. Yeah. I mean, I, it, just the way that I do, you know, resumes and, and content for people's LinkedIn profiles, mm -hmm. you know, to me, it is all about the keywords and, and I, I, I like to quantify things. I think numbers speak volumes. And so, you know, I, ha I have my own approach to mm -hmm. things. And um, as I say, I've been, I've been pretty busy and it's kind of crazy because I don't even have a website. I just use my LinkedIn profile. Well, that's, so that's all, true. all my business is word of mouth referral. I have, you know, repeat clients and clients that, you know, pass me on to other people. So yeah, so, it's been, it's been great. It's been a fun, it's been a fun journey. I have to say, cause I left, um, I left my W2 job in November of 17. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so you're looking the the removable wallpaper that's behind me. People, people don't have to that. Yeah, it's um, it's from Target. It's removable wallpaper. My daughter just hung it up yesterday, mm -hmm. and um, I do have a, a, a an office in Paoli, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this is kind of where I hang out, and and I thought, oh, I need a little pop of color on the walls. So my daughter's like, how about removable wallpaper? You can just stick it up and take it off. And I'm like, oh, that sounds like a cool idea. And it Sorry. apparently doesn't ruin the paint. So we'll see. <laughs> I know you mentioned with your band group, you, you have a new initiative coming out um, that you wanted to uh, to mention. And I, I definitely want to give you the opportunity to share a little more about it. Now, what does BANG stand for? First of all, I know what BANG stands for. Do you want to let people know what BANG is? So um, the Great Careers Groups, it, like our official legal name as filed mm -hmm. in the state of Pennsylvania with, right. with the IRS and all that, is Philadelphia Area Great Careers Group. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're, we're going by great careers groups now. And I hate to tell you this, but it's going to change again a little yeah. bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, we, we've been working with, um, as a nonprofit, you know, we, we've been working with um, uh, uh, filing, you know, um, uh, what do you call it? Trademarks and, and whatnot. Yeah. So, um, yeah, stay tuned. 
as the as the nonprofit turns. <laughs> sure, definitely, definitely. But anyway, in um, believe it or not, in uh, uh, May first, twenty twenty, um, uh, we took over Business Executives Networking Group, otherwise known as Bang, and they've been around longer than the Great Careers Group. We've been around since twenty ten. I think they go back to like 2003 or something like that. And uh, Peter Frost was the founder of Bang. And he has uh, since moved out of the area and retired. So the board of directors uh, came to me actually two years prior and said, do you want to be the president of Bang? And I'm like, no, I've got great careers going. And you're a 501c4. I'm a 501c3. And I really like, you know, the nonprofit status. Um, so they came back to me two years later and said, okay, you know, let's, let's talk about the uh, things more. Mm -hmm. So they did their, uh, um, dissolution of their, um, 501 C four. And, um, then we did all our board minutes and whatnot, to, right, right. uh, absorbing them. So it's for mid to senior level executives, mm -hmm. uh, not for anybody fresh out of college. And we have separate bang groups that are just you know networking for um mid to senior level executives mm -hmm. right they are also welcome to come to all the great careers groups mm -hmm. uh, events because that's kind of where we do our career education right. but anybody and everybody is welcome to the great careers groups doesn't matter you know right. who you are so um i have a a, a big fan of the great careers groups who is also a big fan of windtheview.com and he decided to make a, a a very lovely donation um and so we're now marketing this and we're having a contest uh -huh, so yeah. um the contest is open now uh, through November 29th because I will be pulling the last name out on November 30th so here's the deal. Um, we're giving away 15 um, free access memberships uh, to win the view platform for three months. So five people will be drawn on the last day of September, five in October and five in November. You only need to enter once. So it's just going to be a random draw, but you do have to be an active um, uh, bang member. Um, who's been approved, you know, and in our system and believe it or not, this is $195 value. So what, what exactly is when the view, I mean, I, you, you, you mentioned so, it. Yeah. So when the view.com is a career portfolio platform mm -hmm. where, you know, you can put all your documents. It, it has uh, little templates for your star stories, you know, and you can have that right there. Um, ready for your inter any interviews. You can put um, uh, build a presentation with the company logo on it and use the company colors. I mean, there's just it, it's it's just super cool. I've never seen anything quite like it other than building your own website. And if you don't know how to build your own website, then this is one of those things that makes it easy for you. And there are uh, programs for career coaches mm -hmm. uh, that can uh, participate in this and, um, you know, help their clients. I mean, this really helps people shine. So if you go to the greatcareers.org website, um, I will post some links at the end because I know I mm -hmm. can't post. Them. Well, actually, Nancy actually put the link in the chat and I'm actually looking. Windowview.com. Oh, but um, that's not the contest. That's okay. the actual site. Okay. Right. So if you go to greatcareers.org and you go to the resources tab, you'll see Bang Member Contest. And that's the link um, for the contest. And so, as I said, I want to just keep it simple. All mm -hmm. I ask people to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. We don't have quite 100 followers yet. And we need 100 to customize. <laughs> There you go. I don't want to start putting videos up and whatnot until we can we can customize. We're just a nonprofit. We're just working on with volunteers. So, you know, we're no no big potatoes here, just small potatoes. So so if people want to become volunteers or if want to help out, are you open? 
for that because I know we're always looking for volunteers oh, in New Jersey cool. for for our Jersey Job Club and things. And I yeah. just want to make that just want to check because I, I don't want people to assume that you don't aren't looking for volunteer help and support. Yes, those we, in are, jurisdiction. yes we are always looking you know, for volunteers. If you have a certain skill set and you love our mission about wanting to help job seekers, um, you know, and help them get jobs by providing career education and networking, uh, and we help veterans and whatnot, um, then by all means, you know, re reach out to me um, and and I'd love to have a have a chat. And that um, reminds me, I have to let you know that I have, I, I started LinkedIn office hours Mondays from 1.30 to 2.30. Oh, nice. Uh, because the New Star Career New New Star Career Network actually disbanded. I'm sure you're aware of that, right? Mm -hmm. So we've all kind of re, re pivoted a little bit to what we're doing, and it's now actually going to be open to anyone outside of New Jersey since we don't have to rely on the funding or the grant funding anymore. Yeah, we we were running uh, typically up to about 50 events a month mm -hmm. for a very very small membership fee, like under a buck a week. Right. But the bang members are like a buck and a quarter a week. Right. And, you know, so many people have gotten jobs and um, we, we, we hope this contest will bring members in um, because we need to talk about sustainability. You know, we don't have any government funding. We haven't written any grants. We don't have any grant writers. So, you know, it's, it's the little bit of membership that, that helps us sustain, you know, ourselves. We're a business, but, you know, we're a nonprofit. So we're just trying to do what we do um, just for small amounts and, you know, give, uh, we have give butter. And so giving Tuesday only comes once a year, but mm -hmm. we have people who are, are generous um, donors. Um, even believe it or not, you might, you might think, um, um, I don't know if I should say his name or not, I will I will ask his permission and and uh, put put it in the comments if you would like to say his name. Uh, but we do have I do have colleagues who are if you want to call them competitors, I don't look at them competitors. They're colleagues, and who are absolute generous donors of our organization. No, we are we are not we all we are collaborators. Collaborators, yes. We are all in the similar space and we all care and support each other. That's not it, it is not. It is not a can you top this, and it has never been that way with me. It will yeah, never be that. Plenty of work out there for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah, you, know, you know, there's different strokes for different folks, different people. Like I don't do career assessments. Right. Um, you know, I would refer, you know, career assessments to, you know, there's multiple people that do it, but the first person that comes to mind is Ed Samuel. You know, he does career direct. I really Same like with that. resumes. I can look at a resume. I can probably do a best guess of one, but I'm not your resume guy. I mean, as, yeah. uh, because that's the worst thing you can do is. Is put pigeonhole yourself in something you say you can do and can't do it. Yeah. So um, anyway, I will follow up with some some links sure. and, and whatnot. But you know, I, I've been doing some reading about career portfolios aside from the okay. two articles that I wrote. Mm -hmm. um, there's a there's a good HBR article, and it's it's called um, "Why Should You Build a Co Career Portfolio, Not a Career Path," and I. I love one of the quotes in it. It's it says, noting um, shedding skin like a reptile, and and a time for change. So mm -hmm. you grow and evolve, you know, over time. You know, kind of like a multi potentialite. You may have a whole bunch of different eclectic interests and whatnot. But the one thing I don't agree with in that article is that they say it's not a physical entity or a system, and I disagree with that. You can have a physical entity. When I went, I, I, I'm interested in, you know, after I finish my doctoral dissertation, I'm interested in some part-time uh, career services at mm -hmm. university. I really, I miss K-12, but I really like the, the older kids. So that means that I still like the college kids. <laughs> okay. and, um, um, I, would, I would like to, you know, participate in that. So when I went... Uh, a couple years ago for in, a couple interviews, I printed out my career portfolio. And you know, when you go to Staples, you can, you can get this like black or blue plastic cover, yep. you put your papers in it, you get a clear cover and then it gets spiral bound. Right. So, you know, you make a custom cover that has the logo of whoever it is that you're interviewing with and you can 
leave behind this thing. And it really will set you apart from other, um, other candidates. So this morning, I just saw Eric Kramer um, uh, wrote a, a, a post about mm -hmm. his book, Active Interviewing. Mm -hmm. That was an excellent book. I've read it cover to cover. I've highlighted it. I've annotated it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's kind of what got me going on this idea of a career portfolio back in the day when I was looking for my my next job from K-12, you know, to get back into the corporate world. But um, anyway, so if you um, want to read my articles, um, I will post them, but okay. they are on greatcareers.org. And if you tap, uh, put any keyword in the top mm -hmm. right, you will see, um, just type in career portfolio and, and articles will come up. So I did write two. One is generic um, and, and one is on, on Win the View. I think that's so great. It is always great catching up with you, Lynn, and I have to thank my audience very much. And just as a reminder, next week, Lynn's going to be back with a bunch of other of uh, my fellow LinkedIn trainers. We're just going to have a blast, even though it's the end of the summer. Um, networking happens 24-7 all the time. And I know we were talking about meeting in the city, I know, Lynn. And I, yeah. I don't know if we're going to actually have, have that happen in September. But I have a couple of my LinkedIn trainers coming in from England in, during oh. the holidays. Oh, so yeah. I'm, so I'm actually hoping. Do you know Sarah Clay, by the way? Or have you heard of her? Yeah, we're Sarah Clay, Sarah Clay is coming in with her family, and we're actually having a chat in a little while because she wants to know what to do in the city when she gets here. So that's awesome. When's she coming in? She's coming in Christmas week. Okay. Um, so we're talking about what to do in the city because she's only she hasn't been to the city in a very long time. Well, I could I could join you Christmas week. Yeah, I think that's gonna be great. Maybe we can get a bunch okay. of people there. So um I want to thank you guys all for attending today next week. Um, we're going to be on for two hours, then I'm taking a well-needed break the week after um, to kind of decompress after the su after the uh, the summer, and we'll see everyone again. And I'm going to announce today that we're actually going back in person in September, wow. my first in-person event wow. in town, because I just yes. what we just had an outdoor social as our first. I, I wanted to get to and couldn't. How was it? It was small, but it was such a great venue. Uh, the weather was just perfect. The food was great. There were so many different kinds of uh, flavors on tap. <laughs> well, I know that we're, we're trying, you know, Marty, Christine, Lisa Rangel, um, and Alex and I, and Bryn Tillman, hopefully. We're, we all try to go to a diner every other month on a Saturday morning. Yeah. And we try to do it somewhere in Central Jersey. So if you ever are up for it, I mean, that was our first in-person yeah. networking session. Yeah, we'll absolutely. Let, let me know uh, we will. when you're doing it. Sounds great. Yeah. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks a, a lot again for attending. Um, have a good rest of the day and rest of the week. All right. Thanks so much for having me.